Hey there, welcome. Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 357. Today, I'm going to give you an overview of joint replacements. Yeah, we're, we're, going, we're going completely different direction today. Hold on a minute. I'll tell you a little bit more about what and why. If you're new to the show, head on over to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com for show notes, other episodes, transcripts, videos, audio. Sign up for the newsletter or head on over to whistlekick.com. You can sign up for the newsletter there too. And you can save 15% in the store on everything with the code PODCAST15. And thanks for doing that. It helps us. Helps pay the bills. There are bills. We got to pay them. All right. So if you've been training for a while, you probably know the strain that martial arts can take on the joints. And some people elect to replace those joints. We have that technology, which let me just say as an aside, that's amazing. Here, let's cut open your body and take part of it out and take a man-made part that's going to work better and put it in there. And then you're going to keep using it. Mind-blowing to me. But it happens. It happens all the time. And quite a few people who have been on the show have had joint replacements. In fact, some of them have had multiple joint replacements. But when do you know it's time? Well, only a doctor can really tell you that. But today, I'm going to give you some information that might help you understand a bit more about the process, the what, the why. And so if it does seem like that's a path that you want to explore, maybe you've got a little bit more foundational information. Or if someone's talking to you about joint replacements, you can have a bit more of a elevated conversation. Joint replacement or replacement arthroplasty is a type of surgical procedure that replaces the joint surface that was destroyed by joint diseases such as arthritis. It is intended to alleviate joint pain that cannot be treated by less invasive medical procedures. According to statistics from 2009, around 773,000 United States people had undergone joint replacement surgeries, particularly on the hip or the knee. The joints on the hips and the knees are those most commonly damaged. And as an aside, it's shoes. There's an episode brewing below the surface about shoes. Just haven't done it yet. I've talked on this show about shoes and bare feet, though. Background. A surgeon named Dr. Stephen S. Hudak of New York City started researching bone healing in 1936. In 1939, he experimented with joint surgery on animals by using artificial joints made of plastic and steel. The experiments were in part successful. A dog that he experimented on began jumping and dashing six months after the surgery without showing any signs of being limp. The first human he performed joint surgery on was a 38-year-old woman whose upper left leg was ready to be amputated. Months after the surgery, the woman was able to walk properly again. Dr. Hudak's next patients were a farmer who suffered from degenerative arthritis, a 64-year-old woman who had a broken hip, and an Air Force veteran who had very limited mobility because of arthritis. In the last few decades, the most successful type of arthroplasty is joint replacement with a prosthesis. One example is the hip replacement surgery in which the hip joints can be partially or totally replaced by prosthesis. The shoulder joint can be replaced, and that's usually an option in severe cases of arthritis. Two major approaches are used to perform this procedure, deltopectoral and transdeltoid. Deltopectoral requires the supraspinatus to be cut in order to have access to the shoulder joint. Transdeltoid approach gives direct access to the glenoid. However, it could potentially damage the deltoid. The risks associated with shoulder joint replacement surgeries is relatively low, less than 5%. The risks, however, would only include the usual risk of surgery, like infection, dislocation, stuff like that. Hip joint replacement is one of the most common surgeries undergone by patients who suffer from osteoarthritis. And very popular in the martial arts world. Two types of hip replacement are total hip replacement and hemi or half hip replacement. Total hip replacement replaces both the socket and the femoral head. The latter, hemioarthroplasty, only replaces the femoral head. And there are several risks associated with hip replacement surgery, like infection, dislocation, fracture, vein thrombosis, chronic pain, and others. It can also result in death in very, very rare cases with the probability far under 1%. And of course, you probably know someone who's had a hip replaced, just statistically. 
knee joint replacement surgery is performed by exposing the front of the knee, the patella, through detaching a part of the quadriceps muscle from the kneecap. Afterwards, the patella is moved to one side of the joint to expose the distal, the far end, of the femur and the proximal, the near end, of the tibia. Once the ends of these two bones are sufficiently exposed, they are cut accurately following the cutting guides. Knee parts will be removed, such as cartilage and the anterior cruciate ligament, or ACL. The posterior cruciate lig ligament, PCL, may also be removed. Studies show that patients who had their PCL removed and patients who retained their PCL had almost similar results in range of motion, knee pain, and overall quality of life. After removing the ligaments, the metal components are placed using PMMA cement. There's a full word for that, but I'm not going to read it. It's a lot of letters. Cementless techniques also exist, such as using porous metal prosthesis made from tantalum or titanium, which both have very high biocompatibility. Risks in knee replacement include deep vein thrombosis, which is the most common risk, fractures, which is more common in aging patients, a loss of motion, instability, you know, a dislocation of the kneecap, and of course, infection. In the United States, 4.6% of all operating room procedures in 2011 involved knee arthroplasty, with a number of more than 700,000 hospitalizations. Which tells you, this is not an uncommon procedure. And if it's not an uncommon procedure, it's probably a fairly safe procedure. Ankle replacements are an option to patients and used to restore the original range of motion of the ankles. At present, the procedure is favored over Arthrodesis, because it provides better overall function with the use of more modern designs as in compared to the initial design in the early 70s. I don't know why anybody's had an ankle replaced. Finger joint replacement is the simplest of all joint replacement surgeries. The procedure takes about 30 minutes. However, there are months of subsequent therapy for the patient to get used to the implanted prosthesis. And that, whether it's finger or any other joint, I've talked to a number of people who've had joint replacements, it's that balance between letting things heal, but maintaining range of motion. And it's a, it's a very difficult balance. And I know people that have gone back for multiple surgeries to try to repair and improve range of motion after a procedure like this. Procedural timeline. The patient will undergo x-rays on the areas where the surgery will be performed. And the x-rays must be accurate because the design of the implant will be based on these x-rays, also known as templating. Yeah, it's not a one-size-fits-all joint. They've got to make it for your body because everybody's different. There are several preparations made before a patient undergoes joint replacement surgery. These include a complete pre-anesthetic check to see if the patient has any medical problems or diseases so the procedure can be modified accordingly. And this is to avoid complications that could arise during the surgery. In older patients, additional preparations are usually required, including an ECG or EKG, urine tests, blood work, all kinds of things. Blood typing and cross matching has also become part of the routine in case the patient needs blood transfusion during the procedure due to blood loss. After surgery, the patient must stay at the hospital for anywhere from a few days up to a few weeks to allow the wound to heal. And that's followed by weeks of healing and rehab to not only speed up recovery, but as I said, maintain range of motion. Improvement in both strength and endurance take months. In modern practice, the patient is mobilized as soon as possible to reduce the chances of having any complications. After a hip replacement surgery, for example, the patient will be advised to use walking aids during physical therapy sessions. The materials used in manufacturing implant prosthetics are mostly ceramic, including aluminum, zirconium, silica, titanium nitride, silicon nitride, and other stuff. When titanium and titanium carbide are combined, it results in very strong ceramic material that's also compatible with medical imaging. Titanium carbide can also be combined with some other stuff for more enduring, longer-lasting artificial joints. As with any surgery, joint replacement has risks and there are chances of complication. Heart attack, stroke, thrombosis, pneumonia, and then the fact that joint replacements don't always work. You know, you're, you're taking a, a joint and putting it into the body. And so depending on the skill of the surgeon, that might not be perfect. Things might not work great. In fact, they might not work at all. And depending on, again, the surgeon, the skill of the team, you know, there can be damage to tissue, to blood vessels, 
to the bones around. There's, there's, this is not a, a trivial thing that we're talking about, even though we're doing a lot of them and we're getting really good at them. Long term, there is still some risk. Five to 10 years, the bond between the bone and the components in the prosthesis can wear out and eventually break down. The components can be pushed inside the bone, which can cause a lot of pain. Osteolysis may also occur as the wear particles from the artificial joint are being cleaned up by the body, resulting in reabsorption of living bone. The surfaces of weight-bearing joints, such as the hip, can end up getting thinner eventually. And once that happens, particles of polyethylene, which is a common material used in manufacturing prosthesis, can cause other complications. Prosthesis need to be replaced eventually because the structure of the human body changes through time. For example, weight loss, you know, occurs or weights gain, children grow. Moreover, prosthesis must be accurately constructed to avoid injuries and to maximize the capabilities. Here are some guidelines on whether prosthesis needs to be replaced or not. It's no longer safe with regard to the weight of the patient. The patient feels that he or she exerts more energy while using the prosthesis instead of being at ease. The prosthesis doesn't work anymore based on manufacturer specifications or new components come out that can replace the old one and really become an upgrade, or the size of the socket or the frame is impossible to alter without replacing the entire prosthesis. You know, talking about making some modifications that can't be modified. And in martial arts, as they say, prevention is better than cure. While it's true that medical advances help us greatly, there's still nothing better than being healthy, than having your original body part. For example, joint replacement surgeries are expensive and they need a lifetime of maintenance. We should take care of our joints and not be reckless with our techniques. Now, martial arts, when you're smart about it, it's no more dangerous than anything else you might do. Injuries can't be avoided, of course, but the probability of having one can be lessened through warming up, through strengthening muscle, and by being smart about your movement. One of the things that I get picky about when I'm teaching people is how they use their body. There are things that we do that increase the likelihood of major surgery, including joint replacement. And these are things that if you, as a martial artist, especially as an instructor or school owner, are not familiar with, it would behoove you to, to learn some anatomy, some physiology, to look at what causes this stuff in our movements. It's really, it's all physics. And one of the things that I often say when I'm teaching, energy travels best over straight lines. So there, there are times when we are trying to apply force through really silly angles and you feel it. Your joints aren't happy with it. And that's a sign that maybe something's out of alignment. Maybe something needs to be corrected. Now, if you want to go through, if you want to check out the transcript for this episode, which has even more than what I read today, you can find that episode 357 at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Sign up for the newsletter there or over at whistlekick.com. And while you're at whistlekick.com, you can see all the projects that we work on, including our store where you can support all of our work and use the code podcast15 while you're doing so. Save 15%. Follow us on social media. We are at Whistlekick on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. If you want to email me, it's jeremy at whistlekick.com. And I do have to say, I left it out of the top of the show. This is not medical advice. Don't replace your own joints. I don't think there's much risk in that, but I got to have some kind of disclaimer in here. This is not medical advice. I'm not a doctor. Consult with a doctor for educational purposes only. There. <laughs> what a weird way to end the show. But that's where I'm going to leave it. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.